works. You've run the sound over there? Our world is rapidly transforming through technology. Technology impacts everything around you. It changes how you communicate. WhatsApp, emails, and Facebook. It changes how you shop, Flipkart, Amazon. Now, it changes how you invest. Finvasia, a financial technology company funded by FBI, now changes how you invest. Take the middleman out of your portfolio. First ever, honest, zero brokerage in India. Honestly, when you trade on the exchange, all it takes is an electronic message from broker's server going to the exchange's server. That's just how WhatsApp or emails work. When you don't have to worry about paying to deliver your WhatsApp messages or email, why should you worry about paying to get stocks delivered? For that matter, even futures, options, and commodities. Any and every trade on NSE, BSE, and MCX is commission-free because we believe in enabling users with the help of technology. Finally, take the middleman out of your portfolio. Okay, guys, thank you. That was a little bit of an introduction into, uh, you know, what Finvasia does. Um, one of the questions that I always come across with is, we talk about zero pricing, we have all these brands coming out that doesn't charge anything, and Finvasia basically is the only clearinghouse in the world to not charge any cost for clearing services, and the only broker in India to charge nothing for the brokerage services. Now, the biggest question I always come across is, is it possible, can you really sustain with zero pricing, zero cost, how is that possible, how will the company make money, how will the business make money, uh, things so and so forth. To give you some background, we launched our zero pricing about nine months ago or ten months ago. Even before we launched our zero pricing, we got funded at a valuation of 1.5 billion INR. In the last nine months, we are transacting an average of, as of today, an average daily transaction of 2.5 billion INR. We have over 5,000 active clients in just that amount of time, and recently we actually also got the Global FinTech Award by Benzinga in New York, one of the prestigious awards that recognizes FinTech across the world. So that's a little bit about us, you know, what we've been doing with zero pricing. But what really is zero pricing? You know, is zero pricing really, you know, I mean, is there really an altruistic motive why company makes zero pricing, or is there an alternate motive why company do zero pricing? And that's really the idea today, to talk about and understand what zero pricing means. What is zero, and why is the zero certainly such an interesting thing that every company that comes out, whether it's Facebook, it's WhatsApp, you know, Gmail, pretty much everything is becoming zero cost. And how are those things surviving, and how a lot of you who are, you know, startups over here, what do you guys take away from here? You know, when we talk about zero, do we understand what zero is? Before I go into it, I have a very small but factual story to share with you. You know, to look at the history of zero. What is zero? Where does it come from? Let's go back about 1,500 years ago, you know, even before number system was invented. There wasn't any way to count things. You know, there was, you know, how do we count anything? You know, how language basically started. So... As the evolution grew, people thought, oh, there should be a number system. You know, they were using abacuses and, you know, counting boards to count and share. For example, I have this much, he has this much, what do we have? I have these many bushes, he has these many bushes, what is the value of that? So that's how the number system came into existence, and as we know of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all came up over there. Great. Things started going well. And then there was a problem. So... Up until here, it was great. I have two bushes, you have three bushes. Total, I have five bushes. Great, now I can value. One bush is $100, two bushes, $200, $200, $300, $500. Great. Now, there was a third guy who came into the picture. Let's call him Alice. He's a very interesting guy, and we'll talk about him again and again during the session. He came in over there. He's like, he has two bushes, he has three. I don't have any bush. But what if you put us together, what do you get? Well, we don't know, because we didn't know how to define something that is undefined. If you remember, Arya Bhatta, 
He's the guy who came up with the concept of zero back then. Why was zero such a miraculous number? It's an undefined number. It's an imaginary value. It's the first complex number that we know in mathematics that made a lot of things in mathematics possible because it's an indivisible number, right? Anyway, so we'll come back to it, but now we have a value. Alice knows he is zero. He got his value. Now, two plus three plus zero equals five. Two plus three minus zero equals five. And there are other things, you know. If you look at zero, it's a conceptual number that helps us define infinity. Infinity means distance from Earth to Moon. How do you come to that? So all those complex calculations actually became possible after zero was invented. But coming back to the point, how is zero important for today's startups? How are startups using this concept of zero and identifying how to create value out of it, right? So just a little bit about what zero produced and all the things that zero did. But think about this guy again, Alice, the guy who caused zero to come into existence. What did he do? He came up, he identified zero, he created all these mathematical complex calculations that did all the amazing things, but zero. But he knew he has a value. He understands, oh, wow, I have a value, I have zero, so let me do something. He went on, because he's zero, he doesn't produce anything, he doesn't consume anything. You know, he does not create any value, but he created a marketplace of his own. He became the middleman. The middleman, as we know of every single industry in India today, because of maybe the recent uptrend in technology evolution, which wasn't you know, as prevalent there before uh, you know, the internet or the mobile phones. So he became the middleman, started you know, doing his business. He grew. As he grew, you would see all those uh, you know, oligopolistic marketplace. Oligopolistic means very few participants in the market who dominate the entire industry. And there's a consumer, and there's a middleman over there. He kept growing. He kept eating his share. Consumer kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The marketplace became bigger, more and more oligopolistic. The middleman became much more powerful, and the consumer really did not have much. And that is, I think, where a lot of startups can and are creating values. Because if you're able to disintermediate this middleman who's been plaguing the growth of the industries for so long, you really have a value. Now think about it. Why is Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies worth hundreds of billions of dollars in less than 10 years of their inception? Because it's a peer-to-peer -peer money. It's a P2P concept. Amazon, what did it do? It made everybody a seller and everybody a buyer, taking out the monopolistic and oligopolistic market and making it a sociopolistic market, right? Talk about eBay. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no limit to how many examples you can take, but pretty much every unicorn that you look at, by and large somewhere, did the exact same thing. So that's really what we're talking about. What does startup mean? You know, uh, zero means to startup. It's, it's one area, because when we look at technology, we try to create a lot of creative technology, and sometimes we kind of miss simple use cases that can be enabled with the help of technology, and that's where the zero becomes predominantly in, interesting. At Finvatia, we identified this. We saw that financial industry, as we know of, is marred because there are a bunch of these banks over here, then there are all these brokers and sub-brokers and middlemen, people all over India trying to sell products from just those few banks over there. And the biggest problem is that there's an ethical crossroad that those guys are not able to sort of take a hump over. Why? Because the salesman has his own interest, right? We know financial market has become a glorified carnival. We have hundreds of these, uh, you know, magazines and, you know, TV channels talking about glorifying, creating commotion because commotion begets volume and volume begets commissions. That's where we stepped in and we thought we will make a zero cost financial ecosystem. An ecosystem that goes into investment, saving, spending and lending without having the baggage of commissions and cost to it. And social holistic. So we'll, we can go into the details of this, but I think in the interest of time, I'm going to keep it a little bit short. I'm going to skip through a couple of slides over here. And here's some of the things that we created that basically made zero cost uh, you know, services in India. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, you know, social trading, uh, lending against financial assets, social remittances, some of the things that are coming up. And that's what we sort of envision over there to create a commission-free financial ecosystem. 
Obviously, I know it's after lunch. A lot of people would be sleepy over here, so I don't want to keep on dragging it. I'm open for questions if you guys have any. Please. Have a mic for him. I, um, so I used to work with Axis in the mortgage department and I have 10 years of uh, financial services experience. So just uh, wanted to know, like, um, I know there's a huge ecosystem with suppose the agent and advisors. And, uh, can you uh, be a little bit louder? Please? Yeah, uh, there is a huge e uh, ecosystem, you know, uh, of agent and advisors. I do agree with you on the ec ethical point of view because always, you know, the commission is probably Exactly, the, yeah. Maybe uh, somebody would advise a mutual fund which would not be, uh, you know, right for the other person. But however, the only thing, um, I mean, it's a brilliant idea and I mean, your company is also doing well. However, how would you uh, generate the kind of uh, revenue? Would it be through advertising to sustain the company in the long term? That is only because I've seen, um, uh, I stay in Noida, right? So I've seen several, uh, you know, very good companies. Uh, which worked on ethical concept, but they closed down five years. Like, I just, so I am just want to know how you are going to survive without that. Okay, so um, that's that's a brilliant question, actually. Uh, you know, uh, two ways I would answer that. So I'm going, I'm going to go back to my slide. If you can please put it up over there. Um, mutual funds, we know. Uh, Advisors advise mutual fund based on the in, uh, you know the interest and the commission factors that come into it. We've recently built up, uh, we've recently launched a social uh, mutual fund platform, which is called Smart, a social uh, mutual fund platform for research and trading. Um, so I'll give you a basic concept of what goes into the platform. Uh, in that platform, pretty much everyone is an advisor, and everyone is a follower. Um, it's a platform that is built on robo-advisory and artificial intelligence that takes out a lot of those middlemen that come up over there. Obviously, um, there is, uh, you know, you burn some cash to bring all those uh, platforms to the end user before they start using it, they start understanding it, but the kind of value it brings to it is tremendous. And, and technology is a big enabler in that case. You know, if you have the technology to back up and to scale up without having to rely on thousands and thousands of advisors and you can build up, uh, you know, the kind of um, uh, credibility. For example, even before we launched it, we got 1.5 billion INR for these products. That's the kind of credibility that people look for when they invest into these kind of things. Does that answer well? Any more questions, guys? Please. Hi, uh, Hi, good afternoon. Actually, I just had a talk with the uh, two colleagues over here as well. Uh -huh. And uh, it's amazing, I mean, because I've been, uh, to be honest, I have a couple of accounts in India. I'm from Malaysia. Uh -huh. And I've done a couple of investments here as well, but only through banks, bonds, and mutual funds as well. And I pay a hefty amount of tax, <laughs> to be honest. When you mentioned this, it really struck my mind because nowhere in the world I've seen actually they mention uh, pretty much. Can you be a little bit louder, please? Okay. Sorry. Nowhere in the world I've ever seen they said no commission because usually the commission ranges from 3 to 7% on, on each and every brokerage that we enter. Whatever that you mention, I think so you are going to close down the banks <laughs> because banks and brokerage firm mainly makes approximately 5 to 6.5% on each and every investment that you do. So how do you, in fact, I have two questions over here, sorry. Number one, how do you actually see yourself playing as a main um, financial, uh, perhaps I would say a financial institution in India? And second of all, are you really, how, what is the, what's the process of people like us bringing FDI into your company? And is it um, some privileges or something? Thanks. Sure. Um, so basically, uh, you know, just to answer your question in a little bit technical terms, we went zero cost about nine months ago. Uh, and we have investors sitting on top of us asking us, you know, what is going on? 
We have been positive cash flow, positive EBIT every single day of the last nine months. So we are actually a cash flow positive and an EBIT positive company that does not charge a single penny to any of its clients. No hidden uh, numbers over there because everything that we promote or market has been audited by SEBI and RBI and NSE and BSE and things like that. Um, we do not give a lot of privilege for people to introduce business to us. Uh, we do understand that that is a shortcoming that we will have to overcome as we go along. Uh, but I think if you look at it, the startup culture in India is uh, slowly and eventually will be adapting to coming up with these kind of things. And slowly people will start trusting that zero really means zero. At the end of the day, when you're using WhatsApp, for example, there are billions of you know, WhatsApp messages going across every single hour. Who's paying for it? SMS used to cost seven cents or seven pennies before WhatsApp came into existence. Now the SMS market is dead, and all you have is WhatsApp, which is worth $8 billion. So essentially, there is a lot of value you could create just by taking that Alice out of the picture. And that's exactly what we're doing. Make sense? Any last questions? Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening. See you around. Well, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to invite Ms. Punita Kapoor uh, to please come on stage to present a token of gratitude to our speaker as well. A very interesting uh, session there indeed, and a very energizing session, post-lunch session, in fact, for all of us. So thank you so much for that. Thank you very much again. All right, it's time to march ahead to our next keynote speaker. And well, if I have to introduce her, well, she's somebody who's actually started already three entrepreneurial ventures, is a singer and a songwriter, and all of this, I might say, at the age of 23. Now, that is, that's one thing that, you know, when they say that age is too costly a price to pay or define maturity.